Buenos dias, amigos. That's a good day, friends. Did you know in that? In Spanish, yes. In I knew Spanish, that. you knew that? Yes, right. of course. Hello, friends. We are here. We are ready to cross into the United States again after spending almost five months in beautiful Baja. And to do that, we're going to be driving up the five from San Felipe, and we're going to go right into Mexicali and go to the Mexicali East Crossing into the United States. And that is the plan. That is the goal. So from San Felipe, it's a beautiful drive. It's a couple hours to get to Mexicali. It's about two, two and a half hours through beautiful landscape. And then we get into Mexicali, which is a city. <laughs> it's a little bit of a cluster when you get into Mexicali. So we're going to pick up the story once we get into Mexicali, make sure we get into the right lane. We just had a friend come through. The reason we want to make sure we pointed things out to you, what we do and don't do right. A friend of ours just about got fined a whole bunch of money for going the wrong way through customs so we want to make sure we do everything right if you follow us on our journey into Baja this year this season we did it wrong coming in yeah. so hopefully we don't do it wrong going out but that's what we're here to show you for so we're gonna go ahead and get on the road and we'll check in with you once we get a little bit closer to the border this time on this border crossing we went ahead and downloaded the CWP uh, border wait time app so it just tells you the wait times um, for the border that you plan to cross at. So right now it is telling me on the wait app right here, the three closest border crossings. And we are going to be doing the Calexico East. I know we call it Mexicali East. Some people call it that, but right here on here, or it's called the Calexico East. And it's telling us that for a passenger, there's only one lane open right now in the general, so there's an 80 minute wait time. And then there's six uh, lanes open for ready. I'm not really quite sure what that means, uh, but it's a 110 minute wait time. I believe that we are gonna go through the general. We're definitely not doing Nexus. And then there's also, maybe the ready is the sentry line, um, but you do not wanna take that. So, and it has a map for how to get there but I have pulled up some directions on a Baja website that we're gonna follow. We followed similar directions before and it makes it pretty easy. So now we're gonna head towards the border. We're gonna see how accurate the app is that we're using and also the instructions here. Well, we followed the instructions to a T. Google took us one way, Lindsay took us another. We married the two together. So we were following Google Maps and Lindsay's instructions. And it got us to, we are sitting right now outside of the commercial gate, which the direction that we're coming in will be turning right. And um, we are not moving. So the app says 80 minutes. I don't think we'll be close to 80 minutes. I think we might as well have lunch. Um, because it is going to be a long trip. We haven't moved at all, and it doesn't appear that we're going to. I guess it was the wrong choice to cross on a Sunday at one o'clock, but San Felipe was crowded and a lot of people had shown up there for Semana Santa, and the RV park we're staying at, there's like these sand dunes like right outside, and there are people on their ATVs all night long literally until six o'clock in the morning going up and down the dunes and keeping us up at all hours of the night and didn't want to stay there another night for thirty dollars 
So we're gonna sit here and burn gas. <laughs> that we got pretty cheap. Yeah, we did, we did get cheap. So under four dollars a gallon. Yeah. So, so we decided to go ahead and fill up again right before we cross, and so we got it for under 20 pesos, so under a dollar per liter, 3.7 liters in a gallon, so about $3.70, which is, God bless America, almost $2 cheaper than what we're about to step into once we cross the border. Thank you, America, for being so energy independent. I mean, dependent. We just made it over the border. Everything went perfect, except that the app told us it was an 80 minute wait time and it took us a little over two hours to get through. But we were in the correct lane. If you're in an RV, just stay to the right. Just stay to the right and you'll be in the right lane. It's super easy once you get in there to follow the Camiones Autos sign and stay in the right lane and you will be good to go. So, woohoo, we are back in the United States, which is a little bittersweet. And, uh, yeah, we are on our way to Arizona. So, we were back in the U.S. It's been five months, and it's like shock being back here. Um, it's just different. And um, we went to the ATM and had to pull out some cash because we didn't have any U.S. dollars. All we've had is pesos. And... Pesos feels like monopoly money compared to our money. Anyway, so we went to the ATM and right next door to the ATM is my favorite grocery store, Aldi. So we had to run into there. Ended up spending more than I thought we would, but but it was nice. It was nice to have like food, like normal food. <laughs> Not that Mexico doesn't have normal food, but like I guess like our normal brands of stuff, like just stuff that I'm used to eating you know, here, and I love the stuff at Aldi, so it was awesome to be able to go there. And next stop is in and out Burger. <laughs> I am so excited. I have been craving this for so long. For the last two months, I gave up eating tacos and started eating hamburgers every time we went out to eat, which wasn't often, but I am looking forward to in and out Burger. Tremendously. Me too. This place, this place is insane. It's not even dinner time. It's five o'clock. That's like early dinner. so content and full and happy with In-N-Out Burger. I, I love, I love you In-N-Out Burger. If you know In-N-Out Burger people that run In-N-Out Burger, tell them we will be so ecstatic to represent In-N-Out Burger everywhere we travel. It's amazing. I even got one to go. I'm, I'm excited. This is dessert. I'm 
midnight snack, whatever you want to call it. So, really cool thing happened, and this is why we freaking love the road. We're driving and uh, or we're eating at In N Out Burger, and Lindsay gets a text from Melissa, our friend who we've been hanging out with for the last couple months in Baja. She's like, I see you. We're like, that's kind of weird. Yeah, I'm sure like, enough, what? their RV drove right to In N Out Burger just like ours did. Yeah. It's incredible. It's like this gravitational pull. That's why In N Out Burger is so amazing. It just it, it pulls RVs right into the parking lot. So we got to have dinner with them, and then they are headed toward LA and we are headed toward Phoenix so we parted ways yeah. but the really crazy thing again was this van or a bus a, a bus conversion that we have been skipping back and forth for the last two days in Baja, yeah. in Baja <clears throat> we've seen them five six times we pass him he passes us <coughs> so then we're getting ready to leave in an out burger and guess who pulls up the white bus, yeah. the white schoolie. So we had to get out and meet him, and it's Great Escape Schoolie, Chase, and he's got a healer, which is awesome. So we let Huck and his healer play, and yeah, it's just, it's a cool thing about life on the road, is that yeah. you keep meeting people, if you travel enough, you ping pong around and you meet people, and we love it. We absolutely love it, we're addicted to it. So what we're not addicted to is camping at truck stops. <laughs> But that is how it's gonna go right now. We are driving east, currently on the 8, headed toward Phoenix. Phoenix is three and a half hours or so. We're not going that far, but we are going to camp in a rest stop tonight and uh, wake up and go into Phoenix and run some errands tomorrow. So, the joys of leaving Baja and facing reality again have hit us smack in the face because we got a free camp somewhere. We spent all of our money on it now, Parker. <laughs> and Aldi. And Aldi. Yeah. So we'll check in once we get settled in. And we will say goodnight to you then. Well, we have arrived for the night. I am no longer behind the driver's seat, which is great. I am pleased to be parked. BLM land, just outside of Dateland. What are you looking at? <laughs> what? Lindsay's looking at me like something's wrong. No, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. We couldn't do it. We could not, on our first night back in the United States, sleep in a rest stop, truck stop. So we drove on, we might as well, noise wise we can still hear the highway but we're off of, i don't know maybe half a mile quarter mile off the highway on some blm land it's going to work out great for us tonight it is free that's our favorite kind of camping so we are camp for free welcome back to the united states chris and lindsay and everest and huckleberry we're here we're happy to be here thanks for joining along with us in this episode if you haven't already done so please like this video leave us a positive comment subscribe to our channel if you have not done so tell your friends and family about our journey to pursue abundant life on the road and let us know how we can help you get out on the road and pursue this life as well thanks again for being a part of our story we'll see you when we see you <laughs>